guys. Hello, my name is Tremaine Grant, and I am the co-founder of Bulk, the weight gain app. And I promise we built a solution for an actual problem. So let's get into it. So the type of people that usually download our app are people that have been on a journey to gain weight and have constantly come up short. At Bulk, we take a holistic approach to the solution with our three-part system we coined Break, Build, and Bulk. With Break, we focus on hypertrophy, which is the breakdown of your muscles during exercise, so we provide a personalized workout program to achieve this. Then we have Build, which is the process of rebuilding your muscles by providing a calorie tracking system and a meal plan to make sure that you meet calories and macronutrient uh, goals that Bulk has provided. And then the last one is, is Bulk. Uh, which is the result of breaking down and rebuilding your muscles over and over again. And over time, this ultimately results in muscle growth. Now, our audience is very niche, yet it's very large, diverse, and unaddressed by any other app on the market currently. There are a number of reasons why someone might want to bulk, which is, one, they struggle keeping weight due to uh, super fast metabolism, or two, they're a high school athlete without the proper access to training. And three, they're taking medications that can cause muscle wasting as a side effect. And four, they just wanna feel good in their own skin. Whatever the case is, everybody knows someone that needs this app. Think about it, who do you know? And while our focus has been the United States, we've garnered an audience in 53 different countries across the globe. Um, from our launch in 2016, We've uh, totaled uh, 70,000 users, um, and these are some other metrics that we've captured as well. Um, and this is all without any marketing. It's all been organic. Um, at launch, our app was free to all users, but last year we implemented a freemium premium model for our app, which costed $4.99 a month and $29.99 annually. We have made $23,000 in a short year since launching this premium offering. And today, our monthly recurring revenue is $1,200 with consistent 30% month over month growth. And we know that this, we can improve this number significantly. Um, in the first half of this year, we saw a 2.7% conversion rate and we're up 35% from last year. Uh, being that this was a KPI that we focused on tremendously this year, we've actually had two UI UX audits done on the app on how effective our app currently converts. And the findings are both pretty consistent. We offer way too much for free, and that with a few design adjustments, we can see a lift in conversion by four to five percent. And as for our retention, it's at a healthy four, uh, 74 percent, showing our premium users have brand loyalty. So as I mentioned, we believe that we can significantly increase, uh, increase our revenue um, by growing our user base with paid advertisement. We've done a lot of A-B testing around uh, advertisements, paid ads on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and the findings are that um, with a real, with a proper amount of funding, uh, we can, we, we're pumped that we can 10x this current volume. And if we continue on with our UI UX improvement, we, uh, we think, well, we know what we can double our conversion rate. So we've conducted a bottoms up analysis. We found that there is 6.52 million people in the US who have signed up for gym memberships that have indicated a goal outside of weight loss. And based on our highest offering of 29.99, it leaves us at a potential market of 196 million in the US annually. And as in terms of our competition, our biggest advantage is specificity. Because we focus on weight gain, we are uniquely positioned to build features that are really specific uh, for our issue that we're solving in this app. Making this app feel more personalized for other people, um, unlike the dominating fitness apps in the market right now, like MyFitnessPal, Nike Trainer, um, Training Club, and 8Fit. We believe that with the access to funding, we can be just as dominant as these uh, other players. Our next goal in the next five years is to dominate this market and then attack other fitness niches. And we believe that if from that position that uh, we've been a good place to be acquired. Uh, these are some comparables for the last, uh, in the last five years some similar companies to ours that have been acquired. And our exit strategy is pretty consistent with these other apps, acquisition. So we have a great team behind us. Um, one of our uh, great advisors is Salama Mohammed. Uh, he's a well-respected thought leader in the exercise science community, a trainer, a nutritionist, and an influencer with almost 100,000 uh, following. And he's helped us tremendously by turning exercise science uh, equations and concepts um, into our algorithm. 
In addition, my founder, my co-founder and I have went through uh, G-Beta and Startup Boost accelerators in, based in Detroit, which has given us the tools to, uh, to scale this company where we think we can get it. And this is us, the founders. This is Caleb Diaz, my co-founder, and again, I'm Tremaine Grant. We designed and built this app together because we're passionate about it, so it hasn't been much overhead for us. We were both software engineers. Um, we were former software engineers from General Motors. We both have experience launching globally scaled applications. In addition to our knowledgeable advisor, we're both NAFC certified in personal training and nutrition. And that's it. I just want to thank everybody for being on the call and hope you guys are staying healthy. And um, our ask is that these are the people that we're looking for currently. Um, support us <laughs> by reading from the App Store really would help us. And we're raising. So anyone has- Great a job. Key? I got to cut you off there. Great job. Fantastic. Every, everyone, uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I, I wanted to, I just got to be fair to every, uh, every, every contestant. Um, we had a lot of people in the comments that were uh, saying that they, they actually need your app. So, um, <laughs> it's, it's a great job. Um, and we'll can you, you see me now? Because I switched yeah. to my iPad. Yep, yep, I can see you now. Oh. Yep, um, and, and we'll open it now up to the judges. So, uh, whoever wants to kick it off with some questions for Jermaine. So I had a quick question. Uh, you mentioned that you want to put more money into paid advertising. So can you tell us what your CAC is? You know, how much does it cost for you to acquire a customer? And what you think the, what do you perceive the lifetime value to be? I know it's still early on for you to figure that kind of stuff out, but can you give us a sense of it so we understand the breakdown of the money? Right. So as I mentioned, we um we've been doing a lot of A/B testing around that actually. So our current CAC is a. Uh, for a premium acquisition, we're at about nine dollars and fifty cents uh, for that premium acquisition, and we've we're seeing an average lifetime value of our users are at about forty-two dollars and fifty cents. So we know that we're sort of, we're netting about thirty-three, uh, thirty-three or thirty-two dollars right now. Um, so we know that if we put the right amount of investment in there, we're going to get we're going to see that return on our investment. And you said you've been A/B testing it. So how much money have you put into those A/B tests so far? We've put about uh, about a thousand, about one to two thousand dollars in A/B testing. Outside of hiring, so we actually hired uh, a marketer uh, temporarily just to figure out to lock down those numbers. That was running our ads for us, testing different uh, variants of that ad to make sure that we could get uh, a good, accurate reading on what uh, that that CAC was. Can you talk a little bit about your? Um your total addressable market and how you came to calculate that. I mean, I would see that one of the um, arguments against this company being say venture backable might be that, you know, how many people are out there who actually want to gain weight as opposed um, to, to lose it. So I just want to see what your motivation is on growing this outside of um, what some people would think of as a small niche and, and how you're thinking about, you know, acquiring company, uh, sorry, acquiring customers as the amount of people who want to gain weight are, you know, diminishes because they're all on the platform already. Right. Um, so we it started out as a just being a passion project for my co-founder and I, to be honest. Um, we, we built it and we, we threw it on the App Store and we just started seeing immediate traction. So um, just to give you some context, I've, um, I've built probably five apps now that are, that are on the App Store. Um, and I work, uh, I work with Gordy Parker. So we have like, I work on their, uh, their mobile app. So the numbers that we saw when we first released the app was like, was something that we, I hadn't experienced with any other app. The traction that we saw in the first month, we're getting 50 downloads organically a day without putting any paid ads. So like that number that I showed you was, has been all organic where we have our, our um, competitors that, have, that are putting in six figure um, budgets for their ad campaign. So that was, one, that was one facet of it. That was one aspect. The other was the, that bottoms up uh, analysis that I, that I talked about. So when looking at the, the numbers of people that, um, that have gym memberships, as well as the fact that, um, yeah, the number of that have gym memberships, as well as the fact that uh, the people that, the ones that we found were, their goal was specifically indicating that they were not uh, losing weight, um, was at 6 million uh, individuals, so in the U.S. So we, we, uh, we calculated based on our, our highest offering of twenty nine ninety nine, and that number was, um, how we got to our $196 million 
market value. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yep. Hi, Jermaine. Um, just two questions for you, one quick and, and the second a little bit longer wind. Um, first, why don't you know the retention period that, or the time period for your retention numbers? Um, and then the second question was, you know, I get really excited about focusing on specific customer audiences, uh, especially when you're able to like really meet all of their needs. I'm curious if you thought about the other needs of this demographic, people who are trying to focus their, their health gains and their work gains on gaining weight. Absolutely. So um, when we first started it again, we, uh, my co-founder and I started it as a passion project. So we built the app for ourselves. We literally put it out and we put what we wanted in it. And what we noticed was in that first year, it was literally like a revolving door. We were seeing 50 people every day that were, that were finding our app and downloading it. And they'd get to it and they would, we would see about 50, 60% of them uninstalling. So we realized that this was a huge need, but we, we realized that we, weren't, we hadn't gotten to product market fit. So this, the, uh, 2019, we spent a lot uh, on um, customer discovery. We kind of went backwards. We spent a lot on customer discovery. Um, really looking into digging into analytics and specific uh, transactions within the app. How do we drive people to do specific uh, to do specific things? We did user testing, so we put the app in front of people and we had them, um, you know, uh, select different things in the app and see if they were actually getting to the features that we intended them to get to. And then we we tried to figure out what were what were the value items, the valuable items in the app. Uh, for these people and a lot of the, what we saw was people swapping exercises a lot of what we saw was people logging meals so really initially we were, we were thinking it was gonna be focused on workouts but the vast like we had a huge number of people that were really focused on uh, the meal side of things so we realized that that was actually a big valuable asset to uh, our software so we've been focusing a lot on figuring out well making the, improving the meals as well as figuring out where in the workouts would be as valuable as the meals as people can use daily versus uh um you know with the, with the meals where they use that daily, but with the, the workout side of things where they might use that, you know, once or twice throughout the week. Hello, you guys still with me? Yeah, I, had, I don't think we have any more questions, so. Um, uh, quick, uh, quick, oh, quick question, um, quick question, sorry. Yep. Sorry, um, hey, it's Michael. Um, um, I, I assume the behavior is, is daily, if not weekly. How do, uh, what, what's daily active users look like and, and uh, what's your daily active to monthly active ratio? Yeah, so we focus, we've been focusing mostly on uh, monthly active just because um, with the fitness uh, market in terms of app usage, uh, it's, it's, it's really common that people are gonna turn in and out. So they, they'll, most people, while we want them to be super active, people that work out every single day like I do, most people don't necessarily work out every single day. So um, we see people that come in and out throughout like week. So our, our monthly active right now is, in, is about 10% of our current uh, user base in between like six and 7,000 people a month. So I have a question then um, for your paid users, what is their monthly active numbers look like, like just for the ones who are using the premium? Um, I would have to actually check on that number. I'm not 100% sure on the premium active, um, but I can tell you that there are power users. So the premium users are, are people that use, they use it pretty much every day. We actually have something in the app called uh, a streak. Um, and we see about 60 to 70% of our premium users that have streaks um, in the app. Usually are maintaining, are maintaining street, streaks. So I think if we up that number, we're going to, we're going to see a lift in the, the active in general. You said currently a 2.7% convert to pay. What do you do to get that number up to like four or 5%? So um, one of the things we've, that we've come across in the audit was that um, our offering right now we offer pretty much most of the app for free. The only thing we offer that's paid is the meal plan as well as small things here and there in the, the workout program where our competitors, most of our, you know, our big player competitors are the whole, whole app is paid. They don't even have really, um, a free version, specifically like weight training apps, you'll see that they have like a paywall. So maybe you'll get like a trial for a week or two. And then at that point you have to, you have to go fully paid where we don't have that. So, um, we're working with, we don't want to do a full uh, paywall at this time because we, um, 
we think that like offering the free part is benefiting the community and we really want to build that community because we feel like it's under addressed but we think that we can tweak some things so that we can give them just enough value but um hold back on some of the things that are going to take them to the next level and that and then that way i think we'll, we'll convert a lot higher all right tremaine you killed it man that was an awesome pitch 